Well, hello again. This is episode three of Spinning a Yarn. I've been told it's not exactly the best the best title for a podcast um, or vlog or whatever you call them. I think it's a vlog because I'm going to put a little film at the end of each one. But um, a dear friend of mine said, you need something that's unique so that if people, you know, plummet in, they can find you. And spinning a yarn, quite frankly, just brings up lots of lot about spinning. So, well, there we are. We'll just have to see. I might have to change it yet again, but at the moment I'm not. Hopefully you're subscribing and uh, if you can tick like and subscribe, then it will come up for you. If you haven't got a YouTube account, well, my friend says get one. <laughs> so I'm Penny. Hello. Um, I live, well, I live in Broadstairs actually, and I'm going to put a little film up of a walk we did this week. We, um, Often, well, we do two or three, three or four times a week, just at the bottom of our road, steps down to the beach. We walk round up to the jetty and back. And um, and then sometimes, you know, in the old days before the pandemic, we'd get a little bit of shopping and walk back. But um, now we don't. We have our shopping delivered because that's the way it is. So, yes, yeah, so there's a little film going up of Broadstairs at the end. We did the walk on Wednesday <clears throat> and I took the moon on Wednesday and yet last night was the full moon and I was gutted because I can see it so beautifully from my window, but it was so cloudy. However, the weather's been quite nice. Um, we've just had it cooler this weekend, no rain, just just cooler. And last week was just gorgeous. So no moans from me, but I do understand, you know, the poor people uh, in Europe having had, um, you know, terrible floods and, and over the pond, as they say, the heat, well, it's, it must be like sitting in an oven. I just, well, I would melt and we're all our, you know, all our thoughts are with those people, of course. So what am I going to talk about this week? Well, do you remember last in the last episode, I told you about some wool I'd spun. And whilst looking for the one ball, I found another. So I'm rather pleased because I've got two balls. And you can do something with two balls. And here it is. So this is my attempts. And yeah, so I think I might knit knit a pair of mittens with it, do some fair arm mittens. I've I've seen some nice fair arm mittens and I think this would be ideal. They've got a bluebird on them and I think with some other wool from Ellie from Craft House Magic, I think it would go quite well. So that's going to be in the future. And then today I've got on a Tilly and the Buttons dress. It's called the Indigo. And it's so simple to make. And I've been very pleased with it. It's a little bit big here, but when I stand up, it's okay. But I got the fabric in Darnell Mill. I think it was four pounds a metre. And so, you know, for eight, well, how many did I need? Um, yeah, two and a half metres. So, you know, for a tenner, I got a dress. I'll show you. And now I watch... A podcast I'll put it up here who I watch but she put a little tie in and I quite like that because it pulls it in and then it's got two deep pockets oh get my hand in yeah so it's just nice and cool and nice well just nice to, to be at home in really and I love the colour. It's my colour. Uh, so I'll show you a dress that I made in the 70s. Hang on. So that's the dress I made in the 70s. It's actually made with Liberty. I don't know how I could afford to make it with Liberty, but I did. I must, must have had a present, some money or something. Uh, it's still not too bad. Well, I can get it on. But I love it. Just the little tucks. 
that's way back from the past, as is the wool. Uh, but the pattern is very modern. Now, I have got the pattern for that dress. And what you used to do is go through the box in the, uh, in the fabric shop or wherever you were buying the pattern. Obviously, things weren't online then. And you'd choose your size. And I bought my size. That was a size 10, I think, or an 8. But you chose your side and you bought it. So there they would have all the sizes behind each other. Whereas Tilly in the Buttons now has size 1 to 10, which goes from 76 centimetres round here to 122. So it goes from 30 inches to 48. And when you open the pattern up, well, when I opened the pattern up after not doing this for many years, I, I nearly lost the will to live. I thought, my goodness, how do you do this? But then, of course, there's all modern ways now. You trace the paper, you trace it out in your size. And uh, actually, it turns out to be quite good because then you can, you know, cheat a little bit and have a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller and uh, make it really to suit yourself. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. It's very easy to wear. And I'll put up who inspired me to do it. I watch her podcast. So that's about the dress. Then I was going to show you something from the past. Uh, my husband had a job. Pete, his name is. He had a job um, which took him to working in Wales. And he used to have to leave on a Sunday afternoon from Broadstairs and go ready there for Monday. He'd probably come back Wednesday night and he hated it, absolutely hated it. And then he'd work, you know, from home the rest of the time. He just couldn't bear it. There were so many meetings and, oh, it wasn't for him. And he did eventually leave. But what he used to do when he was staying in the hotel, he said to me, you've got to help me because my head is going potty. I said, OK, well, would you like to do some crown to cross stitch? And he said, oh, I don't think I could do that. I said, well, give it a try. And I showed him how to do it. And this is what he made. I'll show you. I've got everything in a pile here ready to show you. Oh, this is what he made. I made it into a cushion a little while ago, actually, a couple of years ago, because we had it in a drawer. All those years we had it in a drawer, and I thought, this is silly. Let's do something with it. So that's what he did. Of an evening... Because he didn't want to get involved with all, you know, going down the pub and doing all that every night. He didn't want to do it. So he did this <laughs> and kept himself sane. So here we go. Handicraft keeps you sane. It's very good for the brain. Pretty, isn't it? And if you knew Pete, that's what he loves. He loves his garden. He loves, he loves wildlife. He loves his flowers. A big part of our grass is, is for wildflowers and yeah. And we've had so many butterflies. And I've been trying to take this one particular butterfly. I think it's a marble white, but it just does not stop. It doesn't stop. So I haven't been able to get that. But what I was looking up about a butterfly and it says a butterfly relies on the sun's warmth to heat up its flight muscles before it can flutter off. But on cloudy days, it says, the cabbage white butterfly, which we've got so many around here being on, on chalk, you know, it takes flight before other butterflies. Why? What gives it its advantage, it said. Before getting airborne, many varieties of butterflies bask in the sun with their wings closed or spread out horizontally. However, the cabbage white butterfly poses in a V-shape. You've probably seen it and never even thought about it like me. 
And now research has shown that in order to achieve optimal heating, the butterfly needs to hold each wing at an angle of approximately 17 degrees from closed. Is that like that V shape? This posture concentrates the solar energy directly onto its flight muscles, warming them up for takeoff. And now the interesting point is the researchers from the University of Exeter uh, investigated whether they could make solar panels more effective by replicating the butterfly's V-shaped pose. And uh, by doing so, they found that the amount of power produced increased by almost 50%. I thought that was so interesting. We just see them fluttering around the garden all the time. And of course we do see them doing that. But I love learning these things. Some things stay with me. Some things just go in and out. <laughs> Are you like that? So shall I show you another quilt that I've made? Well, I finished this at the beginning of lockdown. I'd had it on the go for quite a while and I needed to just finish it off. And I thought, what's stopping me? Do you ever get that? Something's stopping you from progressing. And I realised what it was. She had a line of um, the alphabet, A to Z, uh, at the bottom. I didn't want that. In fact, Lynna Anderson, she often has a line of alphabet on her quilts. And so I rejigged it and um, made it my own, really, which I, I think is nice to take ideas from 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 other people but then to make it your own so this is my I think I'm gonna have to stand up again aren't I I'll get up So there we are, you've seen it, but I'll show you up close now. So it has these little squares and flying geese. These are called flying geese. They're very small. And then yesterday, today, tomorrow, my heart. My heart what? Yesterday, today, tomorrow, my heart at home. I couldn't see the app backwards. She always has a little bluebird in her with a little heart in her quilts. And these are buttons that you can sew on. I just did the quilting how I wanted to. I do all my quilting by hand. Well, you know that. And then that make a little bit of embroidery and a plique. This is a plique, putting it on the top and sewing round and a bit of embroidery, small squares, some little hexes and some teeny weeny hexes. <coughs> some teeny weeny hexes. Well you can see how big they are. My little finger covers them but they look rather nice. I made all that. I did that myself. That wasn't in the pattern. I don't think it was, no. And that wasn't in the pattern. The little dog I did. But the house was, and then they were applique flowers, or supposed to be. But I did them as French knots because I adore French knots or satin stitch. French knots or satin, satin stitch. <laughs> not doing a very good job of this, am I? And then I decided not to put the alphabet in and just carried that border all the ways round. Yeah. So that's my quilt sharing this time. And then the last thing I said I'd share was the book my brother gave me, Birdway. It, I can so recommend this. I really can. Uh, a new look at how birds talk, work, play, parent and think. If you're interested in birds, it's super easy to read 
But there's a little bit in here I thought I might read to you. It's about birds at play. It says, play is a strange behaviour in any animal um, because there's so many good reasons not to do it. It takes a lot of energy that could be used for other purposes. Growing, for instance, it's also inherently risky. If you're out in the wild and everyone is playing, then no one is paying attention to any pot potential threat. And a bird at play is particularly conspicuous to predators, which are never far away. A few examples of their games, picking up twigs and flying with them, then drop catching them in the air, hanging upside down by one foot while holding a toy or a piece of food, then switching the object from beak to foot and back again, time after time. One captive raven was observed tossing a rubber ball in the air again and again and catching it while lying on his back. They've seen um, the raven sliding down the high bank of a river on rolling pebbles and crumbling clay a dozen at a time croaking loudly with apparent enjoyment. This noise was heard over a mile before we puddled up to the birds where we stopped to witness their amusement. The trees in the vicinity contain numbers of ravens aiding the sport with their cries of approval or taking their turns as others became tired. And so it goes on. It's just a gorgeous read if you're interested in birds. So I was going to now tell you a little bit about well, the time I was born and tell you a little bit of a story about that. But I had second thoughts because last year when we went into lockdown, obviously we couldn't see anybody and I care for my mum, as you know. And um, so obviously we're seeing mum. So we sheltered, she sheltered and we sort of, well, we were there all the time. And I said to mum, why don't we do a vlog for the family? Let's do a, or is it a vlog or a podcast? Well, let's do a little film for the family. You start when you were a little girl and we'll see how we go. Well, mum took to it like a duck to water. The only thing she'll say about this one is my hair. She said about her childhood and she said about her marriage and, and about the war. And here we are in 1949 and she's pregnant with me and I say on actually I say how did you get to the hospital mum well she couldn't remember and then she had a very special friend called Rose and she was round there for tea on the Sunday evening and she went into labour and Rose's friend had a car and Rose's friend Letty took her to the hospital and I'll let mum tell you the rest but I said to mum do you mind if I put your podcast up and she said oh no of course I don't mind darling but my hair and funnily enough the week after so if I you know put some more up she has a perm because we were allowed for the hairdressers to come round you know where they she still wears a visor darling Tracy so that mum can have her hair done and she's funnily enough she's due this week for a perm again but mum looks a little bit dishevelled because she's got this dead straight hair that I had been you know kept going since the beginning of March but now hang on we're at the end of July and it's really getting to the end of its tether but never mind if you can look past that then it's quite might be quite interesting for you to hear mum telling me telling you about how it was having a baby in 1949 and then after that I put a little film up because we've walked into broad stairs and back and I took a little film of that and um, down on the beach there are turnstones and they're beautiful birds they turn over the stones and they love the the, the wall around the harbour and um they you know feed on all the little bits and bobs there and they do migrate to Greenland Canada and Northern Europe so the ones that don't breed can stay here 
and the ones that go to Canada and um, Iceland usually arrive back in September and over winter here but the ones that are in Northern Europe they come and they arrive about now and I think we were seeing them and they were a little bit territorial so that's the little film so I've thoroughly enjoyed talking to you again this week I've got some news because I think I told you well I know I did that my granddaughter Lois is going to have a baby uh, in January and yesterday she had the sex told to her and she's going to have a little boy so that's really lovely because I've got a great granddaughter called Mila as you know who's 18 months and now I'm going to have a great grandson so that's going to be a joy and at the moment they want to call him Tommy which I absolutely love but we know that things can change a long way to go yet but uh, that's the news at the moment in the family so I'll take my leave I hope you're all keeping well and enjoying the weather and uh, hopefully I'll see you next week so cheerio that his father had a car and then I began to get labour pains ah. and we all sat there and suddenly we thought right it's time to go so they took me to hospital now you couldn't remember how you got there no. could you you mum's been puzzling over this for a good couple of weeks how did i get to the hospital <laughs> letty yes. and we got to the hospital yeah that was sunday tea time yeah and they kept me in and i was in labor during the night and you were born eight o'clock in the evening yes, Monday yeah, on yeah. the Monday evening. boiling hot yes. day it was oh it August was the eighth. yes and so dad was outside and he was allowed in then after you were born because men not allowed no, in during birth no no but that was new as well I mean that was the what was new men going in like that what being outside yes. in the corridor yes so being right. outside in the corridor yes. was new then yes because the nhs just changes everything right and yeah the whole the, the uh situation in, yeah in, in the rooms that you had then yeah. where it was completely different right and as i said before the antenatal that was all yeah quite new fantastic and then the ward I was in was absolutely wonderful because, mm. as I said, it was silver teapot and you used to bring round the tea and you were in a cot by the bed mm. and they brought you in to be fed and, they, and I was able, you were able, able to, um, I was able to look at you and see how you were going you weren't in a nursery or anywhere oh, right, it yeah. was lovely it was but then they took me lovely. back to the nursery did they or was i kept with you no all they the took time? you back at night but took, during took the me day back at night, yes. but i was there during yeah, the day during the day yes yeah and uh, dad was allowed in during the week right for an, for an hour and but on sunday we were allowed two visitors and my father came right and he could never understand why you weren't called Jane after my mother. Yes. But you were Penelope Ann because that was the book. We put, read the book and All it was right. a lovely book about this lovely baby called Penelope Ann, lovely child. The University College Hospital was nearly all private before the NHS. Right. And the silver truck tea services were uh, all used uh, for the private for the patients. private patients yeah but they kept all that on afterwards because yeah. they were all there yeah and a lot of so all those things were were still being used because it was not long after 48 when mm. the nhs came in and it must have been amazing to go from back home having that sink that dad made the yes. the, you know <gasps> Uh, and then going yes. and having a silver teapot. Yes. I mean, like, hang on a yes. minute, I want to live here forever. And coming out into the West End yeah. to be 
able to see all those lovely shops because before that we did really didn't spend much time in the West End because everything was very expensive and of course it was the war as well. Yeah. So um, it, it was, was lovely to be able to come out of the hospital when I'd been to antenatal and then yeah. after I had you go back because yeah. I went back for about three months checkups afterwards. Yeah. And so um, you had those special moments in a way. You had, you know, what, what I would call poverty, although for you it was everyday life and for a lot of people it was like that. I suppose that's it's just a harsh word, poverty, but I mean, when you've only got a sickness, yes. you've just been made yes. for you. It's not exactly luxury, no. is it? And then no. you go to the West End and yes. you're having your baby, and also you go to the Lion's Corner House, yes. you've only got to have a cup of tea, yes. but you feel special, yes. you know. So they're yes. little moments that you can, yes. you can... The West End was yeah. completely different then, you know. Right. It was really like going somewhere really, really special. Yes, yeah. And of course, as after the war, the big stores then got more mm. products and yeah. people were able to have better jobs and yeah. spend a bit more money. So yeah. that things gradually changed. It was quite common then to, mm. to, to nip on the tube and go yeah. to the West End. Well, I mean, so here you are then, NHS did a yes. baby. Yes. And going back to where? I went back home to Brownwood Road in... in in uh, Tottenham, in Drayton Park. Drayton Park, yes. yeah. Yes, and I was in hospital a fortnight. A fortnight? Yes, two weeks. Amazing. And uh, that was, it was a real shock to come home <laughs> to yeah. our little two rooms yeah. at the top of the house. And of course, I, I said in the last blog um, about having the pram with, yeah. you know, with the two handles and having to they take that upstairs, yeah. fold up the, the base of it. Safe to take yes. baby out for Yes, walks because and... we were very, not very far from Finsbury Park. Oh, right. We were not very far from, from uh, Highbury Fields, yeah. which was just around the corner from where Rose lived. Right. And they were lovely. Yeah. And it, after the war, of course, they began to put back the railings yeah. that were all around the park so yeah. it was lovely and they were all fairly new and yeah. that was yes that that was just up, up Holloway Road not very far to and, and that so, was a nice little walk I mean, and and how did you wash the nappies bigger than a, a saucepan yeah but a big pot that I used to have to put on the gas stove oh right on the and gas stove. boil them yes yeah. boil them up and then when that called off I used to hook those out and put them in out the butler sink that we were given after you, you were born you were given a butler sink yeah, we, the the council oh, then right. the law came then oh, right. to say that if you had a child you had to have a big enough sink to, to be clean and wash and because we only had that tiny yeah. sink on the land. So was I washed in the butler sink? Yes, you were bathed in. That was bathed your bath as was well. My bath. Yes. Everything was done in that. They had a, a thing then called the bag wash. Oh right. And we had it just at the top of our road, yeah. we had four little shops and one of them was a, a grocer's where we did when during the war we were rash, our ration books were put there. Oh, we yeah. were, so you were we known were able, by them. Yes, we were known yeah. by them. And they used to take in a bag of dirty washing All right. with your name yeah. and your address on. And then the big laundries would send the oh. big van and pick up all these, and the shopkeepers used to get a commission. Ah, oh, so you sent your washing like so to I the laundry? So I used to take, yes, used to take oh. the bag. Dad used to yeah. pop the bag in there once a week. Oh, righty -ho. And that was picked up, and then that was brought back. Yeah. And it was almost dry, not yeah. quite dry. Oh, righty -ho. Just yeah. dry enough that we Dampish, could just put, yeah. yes, yeah. we could dry it off ourselves. Air it and then yes. iron it. And that was called bag wash. And oh. if you look that up on, oh, yeah, I'm sure that will. will come up. Okay. And how much it was. So thanks, Mum. That was a real treat hearing all that. And I know you wanted me to say that going to UCH was by no means the norm. It really wasn't. But because you had such bad housing, really, um, I mean, the council had to put you in a sink because dad had made this little he was a 
uh, a sheet metal worker and he'd made a little sink for mum with a bucket underneath and a hose pipe, a uh, piece of piping. And so that's all mum had, that little sink that he'd put on the landing. And so uh, the council, by law, as she was having a baby, had to put a sink in, in, the, in the two rooms. So she got a butler sink. Um, and also uh, her GP said he was trained, she was trained at UCH and she said, you're not having a baby here. I'm going to get you into a university co college hospital, which was a teaching hospital. In 1948, it had been um, changed to a teaching hospital and it was uh, private. And so, yeah, in 1949, it was it was National Trust, Na not National Trust. It was National Health. And um, so, yeah, so mum got the benefit of that. But there wasn't too many people who got that benefit. And she's been thrilled about it for all these years. I'll put the little film up now of our walk into Broadstairs. Thank you. 